Welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. In today's episode, we're making this image today of this flower. We're going to add a texture to it, and I think it's going to be really cool. Uh, we're using Topaz Studio 2, uh, the texturizing filter in there. We're using Photoshop, and we're also, I'm going to be showing you some TK actions. I've been showing you those lately, and also I'm going to introduce you to the luminosity panel today. It's going to be a great episode, so hang on and let's get started. The first thing I want to do is clean this image up a little bit. So let's just get a uh, blank layer. Just click on this icon here. It puts a blank layer right here. Uh, let's get a healing brush. That is J is the shortcut for that. And uh, let's see here. Let's make sure we have sample all layers selected. And let's just kind of find some uh, bad parts in this flower here and see if we can fix it up. Let's give it a little paint. This this healing brush is amazing what it does. It's just really crazy. Let me just clean this up here on the edge here a little bit. And a lot of times I'll go over it a couple times. Just keep working on it. And again, I'm working on this blank layer here, so I'm not hurting the original. I'm working non-destructively here. And so I'll just keep hitting it a couple times, a few times, however many times it takes. Right here, let's just clean this up. Pretty amazing how that works. And just just come and get all these little spots. That looks good. A little bit of a stem there. Maybe I'll just get rid of that. It's pretty cool, huh? And let's get this guy over here. This little spot right in there, right there, right here. And just get your flower looking really pretty. I mean, it's already pretty, but, you know, it's had a hard life. It's been out there in the weather, and bugs have got to it. Um, and it's got a little bit weathered. So, we're just going to make it look pretty. Give it a little bit of makeup. There we go. I think that's looking pretty good. Now, this right here is a leaf I think so uh, I don't think it's really helping so let me see if I can get rid of it here's a little tip if you come this way it'll just fill in okay like that that looks pretty good I think we're looking pretty good right there so I think that's a good starting point now I'd like to pull this image all together, and that would be Shift, Option, Command, or Control E, or I'm going to use my Tony Kuiper Action. Just click this icon right here. Pulls it all together. I'm going to get a brush, B for the brush tool. What I want to do is, this color here, I'm going to turn this yellow up in here, and maybe put a little bit of yellow in here and in here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do this with a brush tool. This is a little something I like to do. Uh, I want my uh, opacity be at a, to be at 100%, so I'm going to type the zero key. I want my flow to be very low, so I'm going to do a shift zero five and give me a 5% flow so I can build it up slowly. I'm going to sample this color right up in here. Option click this color right here. And just start to paint over this area here. I just want to, I'm not going to cover it up the whole way, but I just want to, and I'm not, if I go over the flower here, I can mask that out. So no, no worries there. And then I can come and sample this color right in here. So these blend in here, blend this in a little bit. I just want all yellow in here, I think. And again, if I go over the flower a little bit, I can fix that down in here. And here, sample, resampling these colors. Just want to fill this in a little bit. I just think it's going to help out here a little bit. Soften it up. Let's get some of this color right in here. Let's paint out some of this brown in here. This brown up here, I don't mind it. I'm going to sample this color here. Maybe just get rid of a little bit of it there. I don't know. I just want this foggy look in here. And I think that little bit of paint will do the trick. Sample this, and 
this here get that a little more make that all go to the same color all right i think that looks pretty good and let's put a layer mask on it and let's make my brush smaller now i'm going to take my flow back up to 100 percent so that shift zero puts it back to 100 percent make sure i'm painting with black paint and i'm going to make sure i'm just going to paint over my flower here make sure i didn't paint over the flower yeah just to be in the safe side if i did a little bit it's not going to hurt it it's actually might even help it a little bit but something like that so let's click this uh layer two off and on here with the eyeball so that's without it and that's with it so that's a pretty cool little tip i like to do this especially when i have an image with this nice bokeh back in here but i mean this is okay but it, it i don't know it it loses that ethereal look that i'm going for here so i like to create my images and so i'll do whatever it takes to get them and that's what these workflow tutorials are all about just to show you the steps that I do to get to where I want to go to. Okay, so I like that. I think that's pretty good. Now take a little time to study your image. And when I study my image, I look right here and I think this looks a little hot right here and here and over here. So I'd like to tone this down a little bit. And I'm going to use a luminosity mask to do that. And the Tony Kuiper uh, luminosity panel is really awesome. And these are introductions to the Tony Kuiper Luminosity panel. I'm going to do some tutorials on it, by the way, some more in-depth tutorials. But I'm going to come up to, to, here to my uh, Luminosity panel here, the, the TK7 Rapid Mask panel. And these are my light tones here, and these are my dark tones. So I'm going to try to find, I'm going to try to isolate these tones in here, these lighter tones. So I'm going to click on one, and I'm going to examine these. Now this is actually going to make a layer mask so that's too broad of a selection so i'm going to keep coming down these are looking at, again at my lights so when i move to the right i'm moving to lighter and lighter and lighter lights okay still not it's still a little too broad let's go to three i think three is looking good let's go to four mm, i think i can get by with three so let me click on three and I'm going to come right here to this icon. When you click it, it gives you all these options to put it on any of these adjustments here. I'm going to click curves, put it on a curves adjustment, and it puts that uh, mask right there. Let me option click this mask and you'll see it. Okay, so I'm mainly interested in all these tones, but it's going to hit all these tones here. Let me option click again, and you can see the result. Let's see the before and after. Whoops, you're not seeing anything because I didn't do anything yet. Sorry about that. Again, I leave my mistakes in so you can see. What I want to do here is, let's click on the curves layer here. Now, I could either pull this curve down, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to go to my blend mode and choose multiply. And then look at this. Let's click the eyeball. So there's before and after. But you notice it's only hitting those very light tones. And I don't want it to hit these tones over here, but just these guys in here, okay? So what I'm going to do is do something called masking a mask. It sounds complicated, but it's very simple. I'm just going to put this um, uh, curves adjustment layer inside of a group. Now, to do that, it's really simple with the Tony Kuiper action. Now, I could just come down here and click on group here, which is pretty simple to do. But I want to put this in a black... Uh, I want to have a group with a black layer mask. Okay, so I could click group here and then add a black layer mask to it. But if I come right here to my Tony Kuiper action, see this little folder here for the group folder? There's a, I can use a white layer mask or a black layer mask. Okay, so let's click on the one to the left, which is the black layer mask. Click that and look what it does. It puts this curves layer inside of a group with a black hide all mask. So now what I'll do is get a paintbrush, B for the brush. And make sure I'm painting with white paint because I'm painting on a black mask. I have my opacity set for 20%. Now watch what I do here. I'm just going to paint over these light areas. Every time I paint, I'm getting another 20%. Okay. And it's just targeting. Now the mask is, is helping me. It's, it's kind of like training wheels. It's protecting me so that I'm only getting the light, light parts. The lighter parts, I should say. So I'm just going to come and hit some of those. As many times as I think to it looks like it's balanced out. Okay, maybe something 
something like that. Now let's click on this eyeball here of this group one. There's the before and there's the after. Can you see the power of a luminosity masks? They're really, really awesome. Now I think this image is pretty strong just the way it is, but I thought, what if I added some texture in here? And I'll tell you, a lot of times people ask like, when should I put a texture on an image? And when you have a lot of like bokeh like this, soft areas around your image, this is a perfect time that you can add a texture. And I always recommend to try it because you never know what you might get. So give it a shot. So let's try that. Uh, let's option click the background layer so we can see we started out here and we ended up here. Pretty cool, huh? I mean, I, that's a picture right there. And I, I think I could be done right about now if I wanted to. But let's play with the texture. Let's pull this all together onto its own layer. And that shift option, command or control E, or let me get my action and go click. And I've got it. I'm good to go. Let's come up to filter. Let's go into Topaz Studio 2. Because I do all my texturing from Topaz Studio 2. Because the texture filter in there is quite amazing. So... Here we go, it's launching. It's a little slow today. Hey, speed up Studio 2, what you, what you doing to me here? All right, so let's come here to Add Filter, come down to Texture. And I've already experimented with this, so I've made uh, a couple of my own textures here. I'm gonna do a tutorial on showing you how to make your own textures, like painterly type textures. But I made a couple, and I'm, on, I'm coming to Category All, clicking this, and coming down to my Dave's Floral Textures, and click this. I have a couple different textures in here. I have this guy here, and I have this one in here. And right now, it's in the uh, normal blend mode, so I'm gonna change it, I believe, to like either Soft Light or Overlay. Actually, I think I like Overlay. And there, right there, I think it looks really cool. Now we can adjust the opacity the whole way up, depending how much we want. And well, let's get some texture in there. I think it looks nice. Maybe around 60% worth of texture in there. I'm going to take it in Photoshop and mask it off the flower here, okay? So let's just go ahead and click Accept, and that brings us back into Photoshop. Now, let's add a layer mask to this. Now, I can just come and click this layer mask icon right here, or I can option click it. Let's option click it, and that'll put a black layer mask on. If you just click it, it puts a white layer mask on. But actually, I take that back. I do want a white layer mask, so we'll just click it. Option click it to put a black hide all layer mask. But just to put a layer mask on it, just a white layer mask, reveal all. Just click this icon right here. All right. Now, my brush tool, make sure you have it. Type B to make sure you have your brush tool. Uh, my opacity is set at 20%. Let's, let's bump it up to about 50%. And make sure I'm painting on a white layer mask, so I want to hide it on some of the petals of the flower here. So let me go and... Um, what am I thinking? So I want to make sure I'm on black paint, so I'm going to type the X key to switch out to black paint. And again, like I said, 50%. I was having a brain freeze there. <laughs> Sorry for that. All right, so I'm just going to paint over the flower here. Take some of that off, right up around in here. I'm at 50%, so I wanna make sure none of it gets on right in here. Okay, and now I'm gonna reduce my brush size a little bit. I'm just holding the Option and Control keys together and dragging to the left and right to make it larger and smaller. And if you drag down and up, you can change the hardness. So I have 0% hardness on it now. I'll make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to drop this opacity down to about 20%. So let's type 2. And I'm just going to, I just want to take it off. Some of these areas here. I want to leave a little bit of it in there because I think it looks very painterly on there. But I just want a little bit of it off in here. Like so. Okay, so there we go. So here's without the texture. And here's with the texture. And I think it looks really nice. And now if I felt there was too much texture, I could take this opacity and just start to pull it back a little bit. So, I don't know. I kind of like it up the whole way. But let me, let me err on the side of caution and take it down to about 84%. I think that's good. Now, if you're happy with your image, you can just save it as a PSD with all the layers intact in case you wanted to come back and alter it later. But... 
I don't usually do that. Usually when I'm done with an image and I'm happy with it, I just flatten it out and save it because it saves space on my hard drive. So usually what I'll do is you can just right click here and come and say flatten image or I can use my Tony Kuiper action and just click flatten and then I can go ahead and save the image to wherever I want to save it to. And that is that. Well, we're all done. I hope you enjoyed this one today. I hope you enjoyed looking at the Tony Kuiper actions and the luminosity panel. Like I said, I'm going to do some more. Uh, I'm actually going to do some in-depth tutorials on that panel. I think it's really awesome and it makes your workflow really get speeded up and it really helps you. And I really love it. I don't think I could live without it. It's so good. It's really amazing. It's not that expensive either. Um, if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And also, uh, if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please click subscribe and also click the bell notification icon. And this way, every time I put out a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Well, thanks again for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see each and every one of you next time. Until then, happy editing.